Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our candidates forum for the 66th State Assembly, the 26th State Senate, and the 33rd U.S. Congressional Districts. My name is Joanne Waller. I am co-president of the League of Women Voters of Palos Verdes Peninsula. We are sponsoring this forum in partnership with the American Association of University Women, the Palos Verdes Peninsula section. Seated near me are Connie Davenport, the AA UW chair, <laughs> can't do it by letters, <laughs> and Vi Ungerich, the League of Women Voters co-president, and they will be sorting questions into topics. Both of our organizations believe in good government, citizen education, and citizen participation in all levels of government. We never support nor oppose political candidates or political parties. We hope that this forum will provide sufficient information for you to make informed decisions at the next election on November 4th. This program is being videotaped for cable television. We would like to thank the city of Rancho Palos Verdes for use of this room and the city's cooperation in producing this program. Thanks also goes to the League and AAUW members who helped make this forum possible. In particular, the League's Voter Service Vice President, Nancy Marr. The format for this evening will be the same for each office. Each candidate will begin with a two-minute opening statement. The order of speaking was determined by a draw. Then each candidate will be allowed one and a half minutes to respond to each audience question. Please submit your questions on the cards provided by our volunteers. I will read your questions from the podium. And if you can't think because you're thirsty, you can go back there and we have bottles of water. <laughs> After the questions, each candidate will end with a two-minute closing statement and the order of speaking will be opposite to the opening statement. Our timers are Linda Herman and Marlon Moore, and they are seated over there. They will hold up paddles to alert the candidates when they have 30 seconds left and when they need to stop. Now, candidates, if you are in the middle of a sentence, we will allow you to finish the sentence. Thank you. <laughs> we will seat the assembly candidates first, who are right here. Next will come the state senate candidates, and then the United States congressional candidates. Because this is a neutral forum and we have so little time, please hold your applause to the end of each segment. I will tell you when it is okay to applaud. <laughs> <laughs> Please silence your cell phones. Now we are going to begin, so it is my pleasure to introduce your assembly candidates, Mr. David Hadley and Mr. Al Muratsuchi. Oh, I shut off that cell phone, please. 
<laughs> Mr. Hadley won the toss, and he will begin his opening statement first. Mr. Hadley. Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for coming here tonight. As you know, my name is David Hadley, and I'm running to represent the South Bay in the California State Assembly. Before we get to questions, let me just tell you a little bit about myself and why I'm doing this. I'm a Southern California kid, born in Fullerton, been married to my wife, Suzanne, for 22 years, have been in the South Bay for almost 19 years. We've educated our four kids in our local public schools. Our daughter, Faith, is at Manhattan Beach Middle School. Our daughters, Claire and Ellen, are at Miracosta High. And our son, Jack, graduated from Miracosta last year and is a cadet at the US Military Academy at West Point. Professionally, I'm a successful small businessman. I founded my own financial advisory firm 15 years ago. And my colleagues and I, over the last 15 years, have advised over 100 companies. We help companies either raise capital to finance their expansion, or we help business owners sell their companies when they're ready to exit or retire. The advice we have given in that 15 years has helped companies create thousands of jobs. So I'm really very fortunate. I'm happily married 22 years. I've got four healthy kids. I'm a successful businessman, and I'm living in the South Bay. Hard to beat that. So why am I running for the State Assembly? It's really simple. My generation is going to be the first generation in the history of California to leave the state to our children in worse shape than we got it from our parents. It's true financially. It's true educationally statewide, although not in the South Bay. It's true from an infrastructure standpoint. And it's true with respect to our business climate. So I'm here to improve our business climate so that big companies like Toyota and small businesses can stay and thrive in California. I will protect California taxpayers in Proposition 13, and I will protect our South Bay schools. Thank you, and I look forward to questions. Mr. Murasuchi. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Al Murasuchi, and I'm proud to serve as your California State Assembly member representing the South Bay for the past two years. I'm a former Department of Justice prosecutor and a South Bay School Board member. I've lived in the South Bay for the last 20 years, and I'm raising my family here. Two years ago, when I ran for the Assembly, I promised to South Bay voters that I was going to work across party lines to focus on common sense priorities, priorities that regardless of whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, or an Independent, that we should all be able to agree on, priorities like a balanced budget, jobs, and, our, and education. Well, I'm proud to say that I've delivered on my promise. I, on the first priority, the balanced budget, California has delivered two balanced on-time budgets with a billion dollar reserve. I'm proud to say that we're able to do that without raising any new taxes ever since voters approved Proposition 30. The second priority, jobs. The economy is coming back and jobs are coming back, but I know we still have a lot of work to do. And that's why I wrote two new laws one law that provides tax cuts for aerospace manufacturing companies so that they can continue to grow and create jobs here. And second, a bill that cuts regulations to help small businesses again grow and create jobs. The third area that I've delivered on is education. As chair of the committee that that uh, focuses on budget uh, for our schools. I've delivered over $10 billion in additional funding for our schools. I also wrote a law to, to protect our children to, by cracking down on bad teachers in our classrooms. So I'm proud of what I've been able to accomplish in my freshman term, but I want to keep fighting for the South Bay. And that's why I'm endorsed by Democrats, Republicans, and independents from throughout the South Bay, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Now let's take the first question. Okay, let's start with Mr. Hadley. against my time, is it? No. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when you write your question, the question is the only thing we want. We don't want a long discourse on your opinion because you are not running for office. <laughs> So, also one other thing, <laughs> I wear glasses, I don't read hieroglyphics, so if you did not pass penmanship, then I suggest that you print your question rather than writing it, but the most I can get out of this question is, what should be most important for support with taxes? That's the best I can get out of it. In regards to Proposition 13. Uh, let's go to the next question. <laughs> Okay, let's take this one. What can you do to help the economy grow? Go. Terrific. First, we've got to understand where we are. California has the fifth highest unemployment rate of every state in the country. It has the highest poverty rate in the country. We have lost jobs in LA over the last 25 years, despite the fact that we have millions more people in LA than we had 25 years ago. We have been writing bad laws and bad regulations around the economy for 25 years. I am a small businessman. I've spent my life helping companies fund expansion, create jobs. It varies a lot from industry to industry. There's no simple fix to our business challenges. But for example, we have workers' compensation insurance expense that's three times the national average for many industries. We have electricity prices that, depending on your tier of usage, are between 70 and 90 percent more expensive than the national average. It takes years to get plant expansions approved in California that take months or weeks in other states. We have to systematically hack away at bad laws and bad regulations. We don't have to sacrifice our safety. We don't have to sacrifice our environmental protections. But we have to make business and job creation central to the laws and the regulations that we, uh, that we write and approve in Sacramento that govern the, uh, govern the economy. Thank you. Mr. Mayor Atsuchi. Thank you. I believe uh, that we need to focus on two priorities. One is improving the state's business climate uh, by addressing our taxes and regulations, and two, by investing in education. On the front of, uh, in, in regards to taxes and regulations, uh, like I indicated before, uh, I recognize that uh, on the one hand, uh, our economy is improving. Uh, in the month of August, uh, California produced created more new jobs than any other state in the country. We know that the unemployment rate has been dropping in the, in the last couple years, but we know also that we have a lot of work to do. And that's why I wrote the law as chairman of the Assembly Aerospace Committee. I've been fighting for our aerospace industry. I know that the South Bay was built on the aerospace industry. And so uh, I, I wrote the law that provides tax breaks uh, for aerospace manufacturing companies so that they can attract and retain good paying aerospace jobs in California. I also wrote the law that cuts regulations for small businesses so that they can grow and create jobs. On these, on the, uh, the, but we also need to make sure that uh, we are uh, producing the, the most competitive workforce, that we have the best schools, especially the best public universities. There's a reason why we have Silicon Valley in the state of California. There's a reason why Silicon Valley is the number one destination for, for venture capital investment. It's because we have talented, educated engineers, scientists. We continue to be global leaders in innovation. We need to keep on investing in education. Thank you. Here is the next question. What experience do you have working to find common ground with the opposite side of the aisle? And I thank this person for printing. We're going to start with Mr. Mirasuchi first. Thank you. I, um, 
uh, appreciate that question. I'm, I'm proud of uh, my record of working across party lines to get things done. Uh, in my freshman term, my, the first two years, the last two years, I've uh, worked on several bipartisan bills. I've named two already, the, the aerospace bill uh, and the, uh, the small business regulation bill. Both bills received strong bipartisan support. We balanced the budget with a, with a reserve, a billion dollar reserve, and we also have a ballot proposition on the November uh, election to strengthen our rainy day fund. I'm a co-author of that bill. Uh, that, that put the proposition on the ballot to strengthen the rainy day fund so that we can be fiscally responsible and smooth out the boom and bust cycles of our state budget. That's why, because I've been working across party lines, I'm proud to be endorsed by Republican as well as Democratic uh, local elected officials. I'm endorsed by three of the five uh, Palos Verdes Estates council members, all, all three Republicans. I'm proud to be endorsed by the mayor of Rolling Hills Estates. I'm proud to be endorsed by the mayor of Hermosa Beach, who's a Republican. I'm proud to be endorsed by many Republicans. Uh, Redondo Beach School Board Mo member Laura Emdy, uh, Torrance Unified School Board member Don Lee, and many others. That is proof that I've been working across party lines to get things done. Thank you. Mr. Hadley. I spent my whole career indifferent to party labels in my business world. I have spent the last 28 years of my life working on complex transactions, complex negotiations, and dealings with multiple stakeholders in very long, drawn out, complicated, important transactions. I've represented business owners, managers, labor representatives, accountants, attorneys, uh, all the stakeholders that it takes to create jobs, to create wealth, to allow people to do their thing irrespective of party labels. And I'm very proud of my record as a business owner, as somebody who has hired, who has developed people, who has started a business from scratch. We have completed assignments on behalf of over 100 companies in the last 15 years. We've created tens of thousands of jobs. We've created enormous wealth and tax revenue for the state of California and jurisdictions within California. And in the last five years as I've entered the political realm, my challenge, I believe, is to unite the people who are concerned about the future of California, not the special interests who fund over 90% of my opponent's campaign, but the people who live in the South Bay who want to be represented in Sacramento rather than to have Sacramento parachute a guy in here with special interest money and hold this seat for the people who are benefiting from the way that Sacramento is currently conducting business. And I have united the South Bay to a degree I'm sorry, I'm running out of time here. But. Thank you. Okay, the next question. What is your position on fracking? And Mr. Hadley, you are first this time. So fracking is a loaded term, obviously, in, uh, in today's climate. Fracking really encompasses three primary technologies. It encompasses directional drilling, which is where you're not drilling straight down to get oil or natural gas, but you're drilling uh, other than straight down, a horizontal drilling. It encompasses using water pressure and steam, and it encompasses using uh, chemicals to free up uh, hydrocarbons from the ground. My position on fracking is the following. California is a huge, diverse state with wildly varying uh, top, uh, topographic and economic and, and demographic conditions. I really believe in local control of our natural resources. What is appropriate in the South Bay or in LA, some of the most densely populated areas of the country or in the, or in the state, uh, is not appropriate in Bakersfield or Fresno. I don't support a statewide ban on fracking, which is the position of some people in the state. I do support local control. For example, I support the right of the voters of Hermosa Beach to make their own decision about the uh, oil contract that is on their March 2015 ballot. If they reject that uh, contract, I respect that decision. If they approve that contract and choose to drill, my job as a representative of the whole South Bay is to ensure that the entire Santa Monica Bay is protected from any risks associated with, with the drilling. Thank you. Mr. Marasucci. 
Thank you. I oppose fracking. I oppose fracking. Ladies and gentlemen, please. No I oppose no fracking. I oppose fracking because it threatens our families, our communities, our environment. Fracking involves using millions of, of gallons of water mixed with uh, chemicals that include toxic chemicals like benzene, slamming it into the ground and uh, threatening our water supply, threatening our families and threatening our environment. I believe as your state assembly member that it is my responsibility to stand up and protect our neighborhoods, whether it's fracking or whether it's oil drilling. I oppose oil drilling in the middle of a heavily populated, uh, dense residential neighborhood like Hermosa Beach. My opponent refuses to protect neighborhoods, protect families, and, and take a, a position to stand up to protect our communities. And that's why the oil companies, my opponent likes to talk about special interests, the oil companies are going to be coming after me because of my stand to protect neighborhoods and protect families. They're going to be dumping over a half a million dollars to oppose me and to, and to support my opponent. To me, that's what I mean uh, is important to stand up to protect our neighborhoods and to fight the big oil special interests. Thank you. All right, now our next question. And uh, I guess Mr. Mirasuchi gets this one first. Do you support driver's licenses for illegal immigrants? I voted for the uh, driver's license bill for the undocumented immigrants after I saw that the California Police Chiefs Association supported the bill. They supported the bill uh, because it is not just uh, an immigrant rights issue, but it is a public safety issue. As a former prosecutor, for me, I want to make sure that regardless of uh, how you feel about undocumented immigrants and the reality that they are in our communities, the, re the, the important consideration for me is public safety, to make sure that they have a license, that they are insured, and that uh, uh, you know, we, we, have, uh, we can maintain, uh, the, the, we can enforce the rules of the road and, and make sure that we have licensed drivers on our roads rather than uh, trying to deny that they are not working in our gardens, working in our lawns, working in our homes. And, and that is why, uh, as a public safety issue and as a former prosecutor, I support, I supported the bill for driver's licenses for the undocumented. Thank you. Mr. Hadley. So I support driver's licenses for undocumented residents of California as well, but I'd like to step back and, and address the larger issue. The state of California, as a legal and constitutional matter, has been told, as all 50 states have been told, that we do not as a state have the right to determine who lives here. We cannot trump federal immigration policy. We cannot even enforce federal immigration law if we choose to. So Assemblyman Miritsuchi is correct. This is a uh, health safety, public safety issue, and that's why I do also support driver's licenses for undocumented residents. However, it is essential in the granting of these licenses that these are not a pathway to backdoor citizenship. Driver's licenses are such fundamental identity cards in the United States. You can register to vote with driver's licenses. You can serve on juries. Th these driver's licenses need to be different than the driver's licenses that are held by, by citizens. My opponent voted to allow undocumented residents to serve on juries. I believe that serving on juries is a fundamental right of citizenship. I do not support the use of driver's licenses as a halfway step to citizenship for undocumented residents. Thank you. Our next question. Do you favor campaign finance reform? And if yes, what would you change? And I guess Mr. Hadley goes first on that one. So whether you are a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent, if you want the South Bay to be represented by the choice of the South Bay, there is no question in this election. My campaign has received over 1,000 contributions, financial contributions. 
we have received over 80% of our financial support from individuals and the majority of our support from individuals who live in the South Bay. We have run the kind of financial operation that candidates should run, a grassroots bottoms up operation. We have raised over $900,000 since we began this campaign. My opponent gets over 90% of his funding from PACs, unions, and sitting members of the assembly, and he gets less than 9% of his money in the district. It's a disgraceful way to run a campaign. He should be embarrassed that as an incumbent, he's been outraised in the district by approaching 10 to 1, which is not coincidentally why you also see about a 10 to 1 yard sign ratio in the district. I believe, as it relates to campaign finance reform, I believe in full and prompt disclosure. My opponent violated the law in 2012 and did not timely file contributions related to his 2012 election. He was sanctioned by the FPPC and paid a fine for that transgression. And I believe in uh, observing the law as it exists, and I believe in funding my campaigns with the support of my constituents. Mr. Marasucci. Thank you. I support campaign finance reform. I believe that we need to change the law from the top down by changing Citizens United that uh, threw out any reasonable restrictions on campaign funding. The reason why, you know, I, I, I am proud to be supported by a wide range of, of people for my, my, uh, my re-election. I'm supported by local employers like Boeing and Honda. I'm proud to be supported by the realtors. I'm, I'm proud to be supported by, by many individuals and organizations. The reason why I can't raise the kind of money that my opponent has is because I'm not an investment banker who has a lot of rich friends like my, my opponent. I'm a, I'm a career prosecutor. Ladies and gentlemen. I, I, I'm a career prosecutor. I, I've dedicated uh, my, my career to public service, and, uh, and I don't have the, the, the same kind of, uh, of, of friends that my opponent does. But the bottom line is, uh, is my, my independence. My, judge me by my record. I, I have demonstrated my independence. Uh, uh, judge me by my record. I've, I've voted uh, you know, for uh, business. I've, I've voted against uh, uh, labor bills. Uh, I, I say you can check out my record. The bottom line is the only people that I report to and that I'm accountable to are the people of the South Bay, the people in my assembly district that I represent. Thank you. Next question. What is your position on the high-speed train? And I guess, Mr. Marasucci, you are the first one this time. Yes. So I, uh, like many people, I voted for the uh, initial proposition that, uh, that created the, the, the concept for the high-speed rail. But like many of you, I've been disappointed with uh, the ever-escalating uh, cost estimates, uh, the, the, the ridership plan, the, the, the plan to start it in the Central Valley rather than on the bookends where people live uh, in L Los Angeles and San Francisco. I've been very uh, disappointed and very frustrated with how high-speed rail has been uh, administered. And so I want to continue to make sure that uh, those dollars are being uh, uh, you know, better spent, that, that uh, the administration comes up with better plans for, uh, for, the, for the ridership. Um, but the bottom line is that we are a rapidly growing state uh, and that at some point we need to start investing in public transportation. We need to invest in uh, you know, how to get more and more people uh, you know, moving from different parts of the state. And so we need to make public transportation work. We can't just, you know, like my opponent, a, a Tea Party Republican, just uh, take the position. Uh, you look, know, uh, my, ladies my, and gentlemen. Please. As, as my opponent has, has written in his own words in a Daily Breeze editorial, he's a proud supporter of the Tea Party movement. You can look it up. You can Google it. Uh, but uh, we need to invest in infrastructure and not, not just be anti-government ideologues. Thank you. Mr. Hadley. So let's talk about facts. <laughs> my last flight to the Bay Area was bought with less than two weeks' notice. It was $112 round trip on Southwest Airlines. 
the flight time is about an hour, and Southwest Airlines makes a profit. High-speed rail is a financial and environmental catastrophe. It will generate net carbon massively forever. The estimates from even the most favorable sources are that it will generate carbon for at least three or four decades. But in fact, nobody's ever going to ride the darn thing because it's going to take six hours to get from one end to the other. And if the 2008 bond measure is actually observed and the operations can't be subsidized by California taxpayers, a round trip ticket will cost hundreds of dollars. Nobody will ride the high speed rail. And Mr. Miritsushi should know that California is no longer growing. Thanks to the business policies that uh, prevail in this state, California did not gain representation in the House of Representatives in 2010 for the first time since California became a state. Uh, we should be spending, we are 38 million people living in a desert. We should be investing in water infrastructure, storage, desalinization, and uh, a more efficient water infrastructure. We should not be building high-speed rail. Thank you. Okay, this has to be our last question because we're running out of time. Would you change any part of Proposition 13? Mr. Hadley. So I'm a proud supporter of Proposition 13. I've been endorsed by the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association has given my opponent a grade of an F. They have uh, written that he must be defeated at all costs. California currently has a two-thirds supermajority in the state assembly, and if Democratic state senators didn't keep getting convicted and indicted for felonies, they would also have a supermajority in the state senate. Uh, if Governor Brown is reelected, and if a supermajority is returned to the state legislature, uh, Proposition 13, I predict, will not survive the next legislative session. Uh, there are a couple different parts to Proposition 13. Uh, obviously, the, the property tax protections of assessed values not going up more than 2% a year after the time of purchase are central to a lot of people, and we do not want a whole generation of Californians being driven from their homes, as was happening in the 70s to, among other people, my parents, when Proposition 13 was passed. But Proposition 13 also has supermajority protections for tax increases, both as a member of the Torrance School Board and as a legislator, uh, Assemblyman Miritsuchi has supported uh, amending Proposition 13 to enable local taxes to be increased more easily. Uh, I will support changes to Proposition 13 only in the context of a statewide revenue reform where we deal with the fact that we have the highest income tax, the highest sales tax, the highest gas tax, cap and trade revenue, and everything else, uh, which I don't think is happening anytime soon. Thank you. Mr. Marasucci. Thank you. I also support Proposition 13. I believe that uh, as part of my efforts to improve the state's business climate, that Proposition 13 helps keep our, our taxes down, keep our property taxes down, especially uh, for commercial uh, businesses, and that uh, uh, we need to uh, make improve the state's business climate, and Proposition help 13 helps with that effort. There was a bill uh, in the State Assembly uh, that uh, sought to amend Proposition 13. I was one of two Democrats in the legislature that voted against it. So I'm the only candidate that has a voting record of defending Proposition 13, and I will continue to do so. Okay, thank you. Now we are going to have each candidate give a two-minute closing statement. And since we are going in reverse order, Mr. Marasucci, you are first. Thank you. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, uh, discuss my uh, achievements in my first uh, term as your California State Assembly member. Okay. Uh, as I indicated in my opening statement, uh, I'm, a, I'm a career prosecutor, I'm a career school board member, uh, a, a school board member for the past seven years uh, uh, in, in the city of Torrance. Uh, I live in, Tor in Torrance and I've been raising my family in Torrance. Um, I promised that I was going to be working across party lines, Democrats, Republicans, Independents. That's why I'm the only candidate up here that has endorsements from across the party line. 
that shows my ability and my experience of you know, actually working across party lines to actually get things done. You know, with all due respect to my opponent, uh, being a legislator and making, making public policy is not the same as, making, uh, as, as being an investment banker. You know, it, it takes uh, a lot of hard work working with people who you may or may not disagree with, or may or may not agree with. It takes compromise in order to get things done. That's why we've been getting things done in Sacramento, unlike out in Washington, D.C., is because we have people who are willing, who have an actual record of working across party lines to get things done. My opponent has not only uh, never held any elected office, but he has only, he has only uh, served in, in uh, uh, Republican clubs uh, as an officer. And uh, I, I don't, he has no record of working across party lines. Uh, uh, I do, and that is why I'm endorsed by Republicans, Democrats, Independents. I'm endorsed by the California Small Business Association, the Sierra Club, uh, South Bay teachers, police officers, firefighters, and many others. And I ask for your vote on November 4th. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Hadley. So thanks very much for the time this evening, you know, and I hope I can finish stronger than Clayton Kershaw did. Uh, uh, if you like the way California's going, if you like the way Sacramento's going, I would really recommend that you stick with your career politicians and the folks that are funded almost entirely by special interests who like the way things are going in Sacramento. That is what is driving this state to a point where over four million Americans more have left California for the other 49 states in the last 20 years than have moved in. We, despite all the incredible advantages of California, the natural beauty, the aerospace industry was built here, the gateway to the Pacific, the Hollywood, Disneyland, Big Sur, Silicon Valley, despite all these incredible things, we have companies like Toyota leaving for Texas. We have companies like Tesla investing in Nevada. We have small businesses leaving every day. We have legislators who collect money in Sacramento so that they can tell lies and misleading stories about their opponents so that they can return to Sacramento and keep playing the same games that have led to the outcomes that we're living with today. I'm running in this race so that my children, so that your children, so that your grandchildren can stay in California, that you're not driven out of your homes by Proposition 13. You know, my opponent says he's going to protect it. That's why the Howard Jarvis Association has given him an F. That's why when he was on the Torrance School Board, he supported amending the, the, the Proposition 13, the California Constitution, to enable local property taxes. That's why in 2013, he first voted to protect Proposition 13 and was intimidated by fellow Democratic members of his caucus into changing his vote and voting to amend the Constitution, send it to the voters to amend Proposition 13. I'm here to protect our business climate, improve our schools, protect our taxpayers, and save Proposition 13. Thank you, Mr. Hadley. Now let's give them a big hand. Thank you. Now, sadly, there's an announcement I have to make. The League of Women Voters and AAUW requested all six candidates to not distribute material and have their people bring that material into this room. I'm sorry to say that not all of them had followed this. They are distributing it in the parking lot and people are coming into this neutral forum. I will be checking when this forum is over to find out which candidate or candidates are doing this. If you cannot follow rules like this, then how are you going to follow rules when you are an elected official? All right, this, this part of the forum is over. Will the Senate candidates come to the table, please? <laughs> 